In this video, I'm going to give you just a small sampling of some of the many great websites out there for English language arts. But you can't access them on iPads because iPads won't let you use websites that use Flash, Java, Shockwave, Unity, or other web plugins. Most of these websites are free, and to replace them you'd have to buy an app if you can even find one that does the same thing. Yet there are many more websites just like these. This is just the tip of the iceberg. ReadWriteThink.org is a website created by the International Reading Association and the National Council of Teachers of English. And what it is is it's a resource mostly for English teachers, for language arts resources, but there's also resources for parents and students on here. And you'll notice on the side here you can search for different types of things. You can sort by grade level or filter things out by the type of resource you're looking for. It's really useful for finding activities and projects and for lesson plans. Um, but there are also student interactives, and this is the part that you really need Flash to use. In fact, even if you look at this little slideshow up at the top, you'll notice it uses Flash Player. So you cannot access everything on here on an iPad. And especially the student interactives, you can't really access any of those on an iPad. But the thing is, you can get to them from tablets if you use an Android tablet. For example, if you were using primary students and you wanted to do a letter recognition game, here's ABC Match. And it has matching uh, professional development resources, classroom resources, and lesson plans that go along with these things sometimes. And if we get started, it loads up, and you can see this is a flash activity and so you can choose what kind of mode you want to play in and if kids want to go faster and test themselves they can use a timer here to figure it out and they just have to match the beginning letter with a picture that goes with it and you can even make it full screen and then if you had a shortcut to this full screen game loaded up on say an Android tablet students could even just touch the screen just like they do on an iPad but the difference is this doesn't work on an iPad it will work on Mac or PC computers it'll work on Android tablets but not on iPads and that goes for all of these interactives all 59 of them you basically get 59 free interactive tools and games that was a game but there's also book cover creators where students can create their own book cover pictures comic book creators organizer tools such as a drama map. Of course you can do a lot of these things with worksheets but sometimes doing it using these graphic organizers can be really helpful. So we can create a character map and you just enter the information as you go along. And then it says what does the character look like? So really focuses down the information for the students so they don't get bogged down or overwhelmed with too much at a time. It guides them through the process and the steps really nicely. Okay, so who hasn't heard of Scholastic? They're a huge publishing and distribution company for books, right? But Scholastic.com also has several resources that can be used for both for entertainment and for education for students and kids. So that if you go to Scholastic.com, there's a parent section, there's a kids section, teacher section. Under the kids section, this is the kind of things kids might do at home with parent permission. Um, so we've got games and videos in particular will not work on iPads because these use Flash to run. So for example, if we wanted to see um, what authors would say in interviews, we've got these videos with these authors and they play just fine but right click on it you'll see it's Adobe Flash Player. There's tons of games here these are arcade style games but they're based on popular book series so they're just an extension of students excitement for Captain Underpants or the 39 Clues but there are some educationally useful games here too as well such as these writing games these are basically writing prompts to help students think about writing in different styles write a dreadful act for Eddie Dickens or create a tale for a dog's life name the play for Ali Finkel or uh, make a dear dumb diary these games all use flash and so if you try to use it it's not going to work on the iPad it should work on Android tablets and will definitely work on Mac or PC as long as you have flash installed this is even more of an issue at the uh, the teacher page on Scholastic.com. If you go to the student activities here, um, and let's just see, for example, examples of activities are story starters to help students get writing quick assignment prompts, Clifford Interactive Storybooks, Phonics Fun for Early Readers, and there's Computer Lab activities. There are a ton of activities on here. These are ones just for language arts, grades K through 2, all of these. None of these are accessible on the iPad because they are all interactive, they all use Flash. If we go to math games, ton of math activities as well. Social studies, 
many, many, many interactive activities on here for different grade levels. And the fact of the matter is you can access them from Android tablets or from Mac or PC, but you can't get to them on the iPad. Can you imagine how much money it would cost to get all of these things as an app? The pbskids.org website is an online portal with lots of enrichment activities, games, video clips, and ebook reading activities, things like that to support education through the world of these different educational programs for kids that are hosted by PBS. And so you can see there's quite a variety of different um, characters and online portals here. We've got Arthur, Martha Speaks, Word World, Caillou, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Curious George, Sid the Science Kid, Super Y, Cat in the Hat, Word Girl, Sesame Street, Wild Kratz, Dinosaur Train, The Electric Company. And you can see that there's a variety of different types of purposes of these programs if you know anything about the programs. Uh, most of them are for early young students and kids uh, from preschool up and through elementary school. And a lot of them are introductions to vocabulary and to reading and to English language art skills, but there are also several for science as well. If you don't want to go straight to a specific character or TV program, you can also skip straight to a whole collection of videos from multiple different programs or to the game section and that will show you games from multiple different programs as well. So for example, if I click on games, you'll see a whole lot of different games show up here and you can narrow it down by character or by topic. Over here there's spelling games for example, so if we wanted kids to learn about spelling we could click that and look at all these different spelling games. These are all absolutely free. They all use Flash. None of them will work on the iPad, but they will work on Android tablets or on any type of computer or laptop if you have Flash running. Now down at the bottom here you'll notice there are some mobile apps available through pbskids.org, but they're very limited. Your options are going to be very limited and you're going to have to pay for most of these apps. So for example, if we click on free apps, you'll see there are only four free apps and only one of them works on the iPad. All the rest of them need iPhone or iPod Touch in order to be able to download them. If you want to uh, look for just iPad including paid apps, here's your selection. You've got I think seven, seven or eight apps here available. Um, most of them are for introductions to other languages through Little Pim. So we've got Chinese, French, and Spanish. We have a paint program which you probably don't really need because there are some other good painting drawing program apps on the iPad. Um, and other than that the only free one is PBS Kids videos. Sesame Street is one of the longest running and most famous and popular programs on PBS and you can see at the Sesame Street website here um, it uses Adobe Flash Player to access all these different things. So There's videos to watch, there's games to play, um, you can print out the books, bookmarks, make e-cards, there's lots of different characters you can access down here. And there's several games for different players and characters. Elmo goes to the doctor, uh, Elmo's World book. So kids can do these educational and engaging activities, same kind of things they'd be learning on Sesame Street, but in this case it's very hands-on and interactive. But it does require Adobe Flash Player, which means you won't be able to access these resources on the iPad. You can get to them on Android tablets if you really need to use a tablet, or you can get to them on laptop, netbooks, ultrabooks, or desktop computers. Clifford the Big Red Dog is a very popular series for kids and the website for Clifford the Big Red Dog from pbskids.org has a variety of activities you can do over here, buried treasure, a scavenger hunt, where you have to find different things. So, you know, you get the kids get an introduction to different pictures matched with audio to really build oral uh, vocabulary. And then they have to think about where you would find such things and go on a scavenger hunt. There's lots of games and activities like that on here. In the game section, there's an additional eight games and uh, or 
total of eight games, including those other ones. And when we look at these games, all of them use Adobe Flash Player. You can see at Word World they have their own portal uh, with lots of different interactive activities to build vocabulary and build recognition of these words and they show the words as the actual object to try to help build that visual recognition of these vocabulary for young children. Um, there's a map, there's lots of different sections you can go to and explore. You can see it's as in-depth as any paid program or uh, app would be but this is absolutely free to access as long as you have an online internet connection. The problem, however, is you can't get to it on iPads because it does use Adobe Flash Player. Click on the Huggy Dance Game to play. So this is Word Girls Portal, and you can see, again, there's similar layout to all the other programs, games, videos, and then a few other special things. So, for example, if we go to the games on here, we've got Power Words. Um, a robot workshop, what's your favorite word, comic strip capers. So some of these are just for fun. Most of them have to do with words and educational purposes, just like the TV show does. So you can see there's a lot of resources on here. And if I right click on this, you'll notice it uses Flash Player. So Flash is not just for videos. Anytime you see interactive games and simulations for kids, it's usually going to use Flash, which means they're not going to be available on the iPad. Starfall.com is one of the best free online educational resources I've ever seen. Um, it is really designed for building language arts skills and English literacy, um, starting from a very low early reader, emergent reader level. So it starts with ABCs and just learning the alphabet. This part you actually can download as an app. Now none of these resources online here are going to be available on the iPad. They all use Adobe Flash. See if I right click it says Adobe Flash Player. So you can't actually get to this on an iPad. You can download the ABCs tool as an app but you have to pay $2.99 per user to do that. If you use any other device other than an iPad you can get to it for free. These other resources are even better than that really. The learn to read section is really robust and wonderful. This is designed for very early readers, such as kindergarten and first grade students, learning how to decode words and learn to read phonetically. So it starts with some basic consonant vowel consonant sounds with short A, and then builds up from there to digraphs and to long vowel sounds. And each book, these are uh, interactive books here, and you click on them, it sings a little song. And then the reading is supported by being able to click on the words and hear them sounded out phonetically as well as being highlighted. So this is a great interactive multimedia ebook. Students can click the words, hear them spoken out loud if they need to, if they have trouble reading it, and they can click the picture to see what happens in the story. And there are 15 stories in that, and each one comes with, almost all of them have a skill building movie, and they also all come with games to play to build those skills and to build vocabulary through sort of uh, fill in the blank clothes style drag and drop activities, as well as matching games and picture hunts. For example, in this one, you have to click on the man with the cane. And again, if you don't know the word, you can click it. This is a sight word, so it just highlights the whole thing and says it. Some of them, it sounds it out. And then when you find the picture, it colors it in, and you can go to the next part of the story. And it sounds the word out, pronounces it all together, and then goes to the next one. So students really enjoy this website, and it's really very useful, and it's absolutely free. And so that's pretty astounding. There's also other extension activities based on uh, holidays. There's more skill building activities and games on the side. When they've advanced past that up to say a second grade level, first or second grade level, you can do its fun to read activities such as short uh, biographies about famous composers where students can hear the music and really build their vocabulary and their cultural awareness this way. Reading about um, famous 
painters and artists throughout history. And then the next level is I'm reading, which is um, more of a second and third grade level activity. And so you can see stories again, typical ebook format. You can click the words to hear them, click the picture to see what's happening in the story. So there's really a lot to do on this site considering that it's absolutely free. You would have to spend a lot of money on apps to get this level of interactivity. Funbrain.com is a website that has a variety of educational activities and games. That's not all it has, so if kids or students go there and you assume they're learning something, that's not necessarily the case. They do have a variety of just fun games that you can see here, fun, and a playground section. But they also have reading activities such as ebooks and comics to read online and activities to do in that department, Mad Libs, um, which are always fun and useful to learn different parts of speech, and then math activities. Now these games, if I right click on this, you'll see Adobe Flash Player. This will not work without Adobe Flash, which means you can't get to fun brain activities, not all of them anyway, on the iPad. The Myths and Legends website is a great little resource located at myths.e2bn.org. And this would plug in great to any unit about myths and legends, of course. Now, what this site does is it's got a variety of little ebook interactive versions, or I should say multimedia versions, of myths and legends, along with supplemental information and resources about them. You can also have students create your own myth or legend ebook. And teachers have additional support materials on here, as well as this teaching pack that you can actually get to go along with all these resources. So it's free to use to access these myths and legends, and there's a ton of them on here. You won't be able to read or view any of these on the iPad. You can get to this page most likely because this is all just plain text. But once we get to, let's say, Arachne the Spinner, Greek legend, a Greek myth set in ancient Lydia, today northwest Turkey, and there's text for the story, which you can get to that part on any computer or the iPad. Um, you can create work and store information related to it. It talks about origins of the story. And all this information is available from anything. But if you want to get to the actual interactive myth legend ebook, you have to use Flash to do that. Let's see, Adobe Flash Player. And it's got audio going here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. But it's reading the story out loud to me. And it's got a very nice narrator going along with it. And then once it's finished, it'll turn the page. Or you can manually turn the page and go through and do that. Okay, so this is a useful ebook, helpful reading tool, but there's also a create your own ebook, which is a lot more interesting. So if we go to Story Creator, we'll tr try the trial version here. And you can see that you can go through and add lots of pictures and images as you go through and create your own myth or legend ebook, just like the ones they have here on the site. And you can have students even record audio and upload that, or video, so you record story audio recording. And so students can make their own audio multimedia ebooks this way, related to the myths and legends. MyEbook.com is probably one of the best ebook creators I've seen out there so far. And this one's completely online, all web based, using Flash. And so when you go to MyEbook.com, you can sign up for a free account, it doesn't cost anything. You can view books other people have made, and you can search through their, their virtual bookshop. And you can see here's one about a documentary, Into the Wind. And you can see that any kind of professional level uh, publication that you could do, you could basically do it as an ebook on MyEbook.com. So I'm loading up the viewer here, and you'll see what it looks like. You can zoom in or out. And you can pan around the page and zoom out. And you can flip to the pages. Now this looks like just a basic book. It's got text. It's got nice photo illustrations and images. But you can actually make the books more multimedia than this as well. So to show you that, I'm going to go ahead and open one of my other books. And you can see exactly what you could have students do with this ebook website. So in my account, which is completely free, I can look at my ebooks and see that I made one about airships, dirigibles, and blimps. It's been viewed 5,000 times. This is just an example one that I created. You can also publish these books as actual books, and that's how they, they make their money, is that people, when they create their ebooks, they, they go a step further and they publish things. But here's, uh, I, I made a little image for the front using words related to the topic. And then you could have students create articles and reports supported with primary sources that they find, or um, 
copyright free public domain images which is what I've used here I've used public domain images that I found on Wikimedia Commons as well as video clips that you can embed directly from YouTube so rather than being just a standard book like you could do on paper you could actually use a timeline creator like I did here to create a timeline and embed that I've embedded YouTube images to go along with these things I wrote here's uh, a map I made with a map making tool online also flash based and I created pinpoints to show where important things happen. I exported this as an image and then imported it into the program here. Here's a, a free um, this is a concept map that I made with an online concept mapping or uh, visual organizer website that was also flash based. These are not in the program. I made them and then I saved them as images and put them into my ebook. You can make charts and graphs and put them into your ebook to go along with this information. All of these things I created here were made with Flash resources online and then embedded into this ebook. So one idea is you could have students find these things to support their reports and their papers that they write up. You could even have them record their own narration and then embed that audio clip in here to provide uh, an audio support for people that might need it, such as English language learners. And it also supports the students reading their own writing and practicing speech. Storyjumper.com is a basic ebook site designed for allowing kids to create and read these books online. You can also print them as printed books. So let's say we want to read this Legend of Momotaro. You see you can buy it here or you can read it online. And this could be done on an Android tablet to make it a touchscreen ebook, just like you would find on an iPad. The difference is these are free and students can make their own. So as I turn the page, you can see it looks just like a, a basic book not as multimedia, not as uh, fancy, a lot more simple and basic than my ebook. You can also go to the create button and you can build a book from scratch or you can use some some basics here to create from. So you can make your own treasure map and you can add, you can customize some of the templates or you can create completely from scratch. And when you do this on this ebook creator site there's lots of little pictures and stickers and props and icons that you can use. Here's scenes for backgrounds. You can uh, upload photos to use your own pictures and you can use text in a variety of formats as well. Pixton.com is um, an online comic book creator more powerful and robust than most of the ones I've seen. It's actually really pretty good for creating your own comic strips because you can pose characters that are built into the system. Um, you don't have to draw your own artwork. You're basically using pre-existing artwork, but while you're using it, you, you're not limited to the poses and stances that they're in. You can make them move and talk and look different ways. They can have diff different facial reactions, different facial expressions, different types of word bubbles. So it's a very powerful comic book creation tool. And what I'm going to show you how you can use it, when you log in, uh, you can set up a free account on Pixton, and you could do this as a teacher or have students do this. And um, there's a school system, which is a, a different pricing structure, but otherwise it's basically the same thing. And what you can do is you can create your own comic strips. If you want to make a whole comic book, you have to pay for the plus or paid account. But the comic strips you can create come in a variety of ways, such as two row classic style ones you would see in the Sunday paper, or um, a single classic strip of just a few panels in a row. But you can also use quickie versions. So for example, if you wanted students to do this and you think it's going to take too long or be too in depth for them to create their own, but you still want to get for example, what kind of conversation two historical figures might have, or what, or have students um, invent a conversation two characters might have based on their person personality traits in literature, for example. Then you might choose one of these quickie layouts, and you could have two characters represented. and it will quickly build it for you and give you a template to work from rather than having to do everything from scratch. So you click on a panel to edit it and you could then go ahead and make changes to it. You can click and you can still make changes to the people's hands. You can change the mouth to a different expression. And you can have all sorts of changes. You can change the angle of the, of the dialogue bubbles. You can have her thinking something instead of saying something. Change the size of it. So there's a lot of control here in what you can do. 
and especially when we're talking about it's completely free. Toondo at toondo.com is another online comic book creation tool. And so you can go ahead and you can create your own tune based on horizontal layouts with multiple panels or vertical layouts, not as quite as robust as, um, as Pixton, but it is another alternative that you can use to do the same sort of thing and you can choose characters in a variety of poses here rather than posing them yourself there's a variety of different choices to choose from as far as poses and characters one difference is you can actually upload your own pictures on this even with the free account you can also create your own books so uh, when you continue with the books you can create panels as if they're books rather than a comic strip but again But again, if I right-click on this, you'll see Adobe Flash Player is what this uses. So I can make a comic book here, and I can choose backgrounds and apply them very easily, drag and drop. And you can scale them and change the, the location of them, change the posture. So it's a little bit different interface. You may want to try this as well. You can draw your own pictures, really and put them in there, which is a nice little feature of this one is that there's a doodler right in the program and you can draw your own pictures and then save them and add them in there. Staged is another type of uh, presentation or or storytelling program, but this one uses 3D graphics and animation rather than a flat 2D comic book style format. So it's a very similar kind of tool where you can choose the characters, you can choose where they're standing and how they're positioned, you can change the location on the stage, but this one uses Unity 3D, not Flash actually. But Unity Player is another web plugin, especially for 3D graphics and interactive games and simulations like this. But it doesn't work on iPad either. You can export Unity apps uh, for Android or iPad tablets. But this is not an app, this is only web based. And therefore, you're not going to be able to use this on the iPad. You also won't be able to use it on the Android, as far as I know. You would need to use a regular laptop or desktop computer with uh, Mac or Windows to be able to run this this site. The site address is stagedproject.com. And you can just add some information. Maybe we'll make him a zombie. And then you can get an audience preview of what it'll look like once you play it. So this is how basically how it works. You can change background scenery. You can add things in there. You can move them around. You can change the, the props. You can change the overall backdrop. So it's more like a little play setup. Just another format of telling stories. GoAnimate, located at GoAnimate.com, is probably the most popular online resource for creating animated uh, little clips. And you can create an account on GoAnimate.com for free. Uh, there's also a GoAnimate for Schools. Look at it at GoAnimate for number four schools.com. And the difference is the GoAnimate for Schools is a paid subscription service which has moderated content and allows teachers to access and create student accounts and profiles and keep track of the work they're doing, as well as limiting the types of resources to make sure it's school appropriate. Um, but you can actually actually have students use the free version, it's just limited in the content that it has and in the moderation tools that it has. What you can do at GoAnimate is there's uh, video makers, so there's a quick video makers and the full video makers which have, the quick ones are obviously faster to do and the full ones have more control over what they're going to look like and how they're going to work. If you see these ones that are shaded out, it's because you have to pay for a, a plus or an upgraded um, account to have access to those. There's also character creators which again you can use these to create your own characters using different heads and bodies and making your own characters for your animation. So the nice thing about this, like Pixton, this is sort of like an animated version of Pixton in the sense that this allows you to record animations and audio. So here's an example of how GoAnimate works, this profile of it. You'll notice if I right click on it, it is Adobe Flash Player. So you need Flash to run this. You can't do it on an iPad. You probably can do it on an Android tablet um, and it's a drag and drop interface so it might actually be relatively easy to do as well. Um, you can definitely do it on Mac or PC computers, laptops, desktops, whatever. So we've got a cast of characters over here that we can choose from and so let's say we wanted to have a, a, a political debate between uh, Mitt Romney and you can change the the order of where people are located and where they're standing and 
and Barack Obama. And so you could then have your students um, use this with, they can actually use historical characters, they can create their own characters with the character creator, and you can have them change their expressions and things like that, their emotions of what they look like, and you can add more scenes to go through this. So it's a basic animation tool, it does take some practice, you can add some dialogue bubbles to what they're saying to make it make more sense. And you have a lot of control over what's going on here. And you can add some words there. And so that's the basic premise of it. It's a very easy to use tool. Um, but it does take time just like any of these tools do. You can add more scenes if you wanted to change the setting to a different setting or change the time frames. Study Island is an online resource located at studyisland.com. This is a subscription based so it is a paid fee structure website but it has a wealth of resources that you're not going to be able to access most of them via iPads. They have added a couple of mobile enhanced games that you can get to on iPads. There are two but that's a very small drop in the bucket and may not hold the kids attention and be as effective as a motivator as the total number of games. What you do on this website is kids can go on and they can either do it independently or have this assigned by teachers or parents, for example, um, standards-based activities and practice. So what it does is, for example, we have a subscription to language arts here. So um, this is third grade language arts standards tied to the, to the state standards. And you can see the performance levels, how many questions have been answered, how, what percent has been answered correctly. And students are rewarded for answering the questions correctly. So for example, if I needed to learn about context clues, well, as a student, you can click on this lesson and you can actually see a short, sometimes lesson, sometimes it's a movie. Oftentimes the movies are animations. And what that means is it's going to be running flash. And so what this means is if your students were accessing Study Island, even if they were able to get to those couple of games, they wouldn't be able to get to these support resources like these context clues. And then once they've done that, you can also assign practice with flashcards, which can be printed out and used in class or at home for homework. And there are three modes on here. You can print out worksheets based on the questions, which of course doesn't even need a computer of any sort. You can do test mode, which is only questions for assessing the kids. But the main purpose of this site is to encourage the kids to motivate them to try their best and to get practice by playing these games. So they can choose any game they want from these dozens of games here. And so for example, let me just say I want to choose the archery game. What happens is you'll see a question pop up and they can change the size, the font, and the text if they want to. There's some differentiation and some helpful tools here. So I can highlight something if I think it's useful. It's context clues, so uh, she put it in her pocket. That could be a clue right there. Okay, so what does that mean to conceal it? Well, she put it in her pocket. That means she hid it. So you go through, and once you get a correct answer, you get rewarded with a game. These games are in Flash format and in Java format, and neither one of those formats will work on iPads. They should work okay on Android tablets. They will definitely work okay on Mac or PC computers, whether they're netbooks, ultrabooks, laptops, desktops, doesn't matter. If it's a real computer, it'll work fine with this site. But even Android tablets should. Now, when you're done, students can see how well they have done compared to other schools in the state. They can see how well they've done it compared to their classmates with a school high score list. And, uh, and this information is collected and teachers can have access then to how well their students are di doing with different specific standards and just at a glance the kids think they're playing a game and having fun but really they're being assessed and getting practice with those skills um, and as you saw from the main page here there are some things other than the game portion you can link directly to Khan Academy videos you do not need Study Island to do that though so I'm going to ignore that part uh, there's a teacher toolkit in which the teacher toolkit allows teachers to create lesson plans to find animations and support materials maybe to show in front of the whole class um, and for various subjects so they also have virtual lab activities so this is good for science and math concepts that really need that visual stimuli to create these labs and simulations this is almost always done with flash and therefore these lab activities will also not be available on the iPad
EducationCity.com is a paid subscription based online resource for students to practice and be assessed in standards based skills in math, language arts, and science topics. Uh, you can see here it's basically designed for elementary school students. It goes from pre-K all the way up through sixth grade and they also have an English learner component but that's a, an additional fee. Right now we're paying less than a dollar per student per year for this resource. So at that price it really gives you a lot. Um, this is flash based and online so you won't be able to access it through an iPad. Uh, you should be able to use it on an Android tablet or on any sort of Mac OS or Windows computer or laptop. So to see what these activities are like that students do, they would go to the website, you have a special login, and these are the types of topics or subjects that are covered. English language learner uh, is a separate component. So is Spanish as a first language mathematics. So they've got uh, Spanish language math activities, which are the same as the English math activities, but um, more accessible by Spanish speakers. And so you can see when we click on math, there are different things you can do with it. There are tests for administering tests to students, but the main core of what we're doing is activities. So when I click on activities, you can see there's all these different games here, tons of games. I can't even imagine how much it would cost to get each of these as a separate app. And the games are broken down by strand, but it's a little bit hard to tell exactly what each number sense game is doing. You don't know which ones are doing multiplication or addition or what topic of number sense unless you click this little eye down here as a teacher or a parent you could click that and you could find exactly the performance standard that you want. So if we wanted to find out rounding off numbers um, we could look for these games Rabbit Roundup and it tells you exactly what the game covers over here under version summary. There's also a teacher zone with additional resources if you click on that apple. So this loads up multiple things for teachers to access over here. There's worksheets that can be printed out to go along with the games either as a supplement in the class or as homework or you can click play activity to go into the game itself and try it out. So there's a lot of resources on here and, and I just showed you one way to access them specifically useful for teachers. Now it is loading this. It does take uh, a little bit of time. The faster your internet connection the faster it's going to load up. and then the student would choose their name and their class. You can organize it in different ways. And it gives oral directions as recorded human voice. And then it, this one gives a little lesson about how to round off. So this one has a little bit longer instructions than most do. But when you get it, or even if you make a mistake, it's going to provide little interventions to, to remind students how to do it. And then it keeps score. Normally, these games have about 10 questions per game. Sometimes it's different than that. Sometimes it may be five, for example. But generally, they're pretty short. It doesn't always go back straight to this play activity section. What it normally does is it goes back to the main selection page here. Now, another way to find specific topics is to go to the topic search up here. And this would be probably easier for students to use, but also teachers could use this. If you want to filter it so you're just looking for games that involve decimals, you can click on that and it will filter down to any games involving decimals. And sometimes it's one game, sometimes it's more than one that covers something. If we want to look for coins, there's only one game for that. So I'm going to go back to the topics for third grade. You can also see there's a play live button. This is for competitive online math skills, mental math racing. So students can play against their friends and see who can do these basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division problems very quickly. It doesn't cover nearly as many topics as the activities, but the students do enjoy it. Topic tools is sort of a, a manipulatives resource for teachers. So you can see there's all sorts of virtual manipulatives here that are accessible and can be useful either for the student to do work on their own and use the computer as a resource or for the teacher to put up on the screen to visually display things to go along with the lesson. Um, this could work very well also for things like interactive whiteboards, smart boards, and Promethean boards. Uh, there is a mode on here for teachers to be able to do that. Language Arts also has quite a few activities. Play Live in this case is like Boggle. So you can see there's a ton of different activities here based on reading, writing, and English language conventions. Works the same way as the math games. 
And topic tools for language arts is more things like concept maps and visual organizers. Here we've got a mind map, uh, sentence and paragraph organization, which can become really handy for what order and how to organize your ideas, um, highlighting different text features. Science has not quite as many activities, but it still covers quite a few different subjects, including physical sciences, life sciences, and earth sciences, but there's quite a bit in math and language arts. Uh, we're talking 20 to 30 games, about 20 to 30 games per topic, per grade level. So hundreds, hundreds of games and activities on here. You can also assign homework to the students to be able to do at home. And there's teacher resources where you can access data about how the students are performing, when they're logging into the site, how frequently they've used the site, whether they've used it from home, things like that. So you can uh, check out all that stuff as a teacher or as an administrator on this site. Here's teacher features. You get standards mapping of your resources, a success tracker to track student um, performance levels. Uh, you can create your own page where you specify which activities you want the students to be able to access and you can create homework assignments for students to have to do. It doesn't have to be done at home. They could do it uh, in your classroom when they come in and log into the computers if you set it up that way. Schools who purchase iPads are wasting money while preventing their teachers and students from accessing these great online resources.